What up, cowpokes? It's Dev and his old pal Igby down here to give you some outlaws at Thunder Junction, standard legal spoilers and previews and such. Yeah, you may have heard that the main set is all done being previewed, but just in case you hadn't heard this because you weren't here yesterday, because I said this yesterday, but just in case... Maybe you forgot since then. I do stuff like that. There was originally supposed to be a whole like aftermath style set tacked onto this set a couple of months from now. But since we hated that so much and we definitely let Wizards know we hated it that much, they decided not to do that. They're just going to scrap it and seed all those cards into this set. So there's like 50 basically all mythic cards that are all again going to be standard legal that they're going to be previewing for the next couple of days. And we got to see the first 12 or 13 today. And my goodness, this set actually... (laughs) Already looks a little stronger than the baseline set by a, a set like Aftermath, right? Um, there's a lot of really powerful stuff just in the cards that we got to see today. So we should probably go ahead and jump into it. But but first, I got to tell you, I'm probably the only one in the whole world doesn't like this decision. Personally, I would have loved to have like a little mini standard set in like June or something to help bridge the gap between now and rotation. But now we're not going to get that. So it's just going to be like six months with no standard releases. And then we get rotation. And I know six months doesn't sound like that long. It's a freaking eternity. So personally, again, I would have liked to have like a little mini release in between there somewhere. But uh, hey, look, you guys, everyone hated Aftermath so much. So I see why we're doing it this way. I guess the upside is that we get cool cards now. Cool card sooner is always good, right? Let's go ahead and look at these. I didn't mean to imply back there that every single card we got to see today looked powerful. So let's, let's take a look at stuff like Omen Path Journey to kick things off. You see that little Bloomboro looking guy in the art? Don't worry. He's got his own card. We'll get to him in a few minutes. But let's look at Journey for now. Four mana, three and a green for an enchantment. When an ETB, search your library for up to five land cards that have different names. Exile them and then shuffle. At the beginning of your end step, choose a card at random, exile with Omen Path Journey, and put that sucker onto the battlefield tap. So, I don't love the randomness, but I do love that it goes and gets any five lands, so long as they have different names. They don't have to be basics or anything like that. So, I guess that's a cool part of the card, but you know what this actually says? Secret mode on this. Uh, it's actually, the text on this card reads, exile five lands from your library. That's the whole card. That's the that's the card. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's probably a bad thing because what's going to happen most of the time is that, you know, you play this, you exile the lands, it gets blown away if you're playing in Commander or whatever. I guess you could attempt to play this in Standard, but I think you're just going to play stuff like Invasion of Zendikar and get the lands up front. And you know what? I was going to go ahead and get off this card, but I just got to go back to the randomness for a second. You guys know I hate random on Magic cards. It's like the worst word that can be printed on a card. That's especially true here. Like, oh, you got your Cradle? Oh, did you get your Nykthos? That's totally cool. That's going to be the fifth land you pull out from under this thing if it somehow makes it all five turns. <laughs> so that's just how it always works for me, dude. I really hate the word word random printed on just about any magic card so I guess it's got that going against it as well I just I don't know if you can tell I don't love this thing so let's move on to some stuff I like a little bit better like molten duplication for example this is two mana one and a red for a sorcery create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control except it's an artifact in addition to its other types it gains haste until end of turn sack it at the beginning of the next end step so yeah you knew where that was going it's kind of like twin flame a little bit but I guess it's cool that we're copying artifacts, too. There's got to be cool stuff you can do in standard with that, like copy your portal to Phyrexia and just get the ETB trigger again. My mind always goes to that card, but I guess you could copy your Cityscape Leveler and get an attack step in with it. That's kind of neat, too. So There's some fun stuff you can do, but you got to cheat to do basically all of the stuff I just mentioned effectively. So maybe there's a little bit less mana intensive way to make this card work in standard but it's probably just more copies of an effect that already exists for the commander decks that want it to be honest although i gotta say this is the card from today that i most fear i'm missing some sort of ridiculous like pseudo infinite loop or some garbage with some like splinter twin nonsense there's got to be something (laughs) that you're doing with this card to like actually break it but i haven't figured it out yet i don't play enough commander in standard i don't think the tools are there to really get it across the finish line but it depends on whether or not we see some outrageous artifacts and have i got have i got news for you there's definitely a few in this video let's take a second here and pause to look at some reprints from today and these are both actually kind of hype we got rest in peace and grand abolisher both kind of necessary cards to have in standard right now and even beyond you can play these in explorer and stuff on arena because they're in this set so It's also slightly hype, but rest in peace. Man, I don't know if you know how good Graveyard Hate is in Standard right now, but it's actually kind of good against like most decks in Standards, incidentally. A lot of people are playing out of their graveyards in one way or another right now, so... Rest in peace is here to shut it all down, baby. Great little sideboard card to have available in best of three for Standard right now. There's just way too much fun to be had out in the yard in Standard right now, but... 
Not anymore, I guess. <laughs> Shut it down, RIP. You always do. It's a ridiculous magic card. But Grand Abolisher is pretty good, too. This is two white mana for a 2-2 two, two human cleric. During your turn, opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. So, again, always a good thing to have, especially in a format somewhat dominated by blue-white control. If you can actually get this onto the table, it's going to do a lot of work for you against that deck in particular. So no more counter spells, removal spells, wandering emperors on my turn, end of turn, memory deluges. What are you trying to do, control? You can't do none of that. This really hoses a lot of what they try to do, but do note the way it's worded, it doesn't, lands don't matter to it. So they can still activate their Myrix or their Restless Anchorage and block your guy on your turn. And honestly, all they really wanted to do in the first place was activate their Myrix. Control players live to activate their Myrixes, but still, still, besides that, this is just a very effective card to hose them, and it's going to be really good in, like, mono-white humans, for instance. But up next, let's look at the card everybody's talking about today. It's Loot, the key to everything. This is Teamer Colors, a green, a red, and a blue for a 1-2 legendary Beast Noble with Ward 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of card types among other other non-land permanents you control. You may play those cards this turn. Now, first of all, I gotta say, you can really tell that Wizards actually does take like two years to make each of these sets because this appears to me at least to be an attempt to give Magic its own like Baby Yoda type character. Like two years after that would have been culturally relevant. So again, checks out. I guess if you had to do something with it in standard, you play it with artifact creatures. <laughs> you play it with enchantment creatures. Like if you have even one of those on the table. Suddenly, you get two cards every turn, and an extra two cards every turn is actually very good. So, like, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm pretty sure this dude actually isn't very good in competitive play. I kind of hope I'm proved wrong, but I kind of also hope that I'm not, because <laughs> I don't know if I want that world. But either way, the dude is, like, very adorable. Look at him. He's cute. He's probably from Bloomborough. I wasn't joking with that earlier. I think this dude probably is somehow from Bloomboro, and that's how it's going to bleed into the next set because this story is going to take like 12 sets or whatever they're doing. So, you know, I think that this is probably some sort of through line to the double B, the next set that we get. But aside from all that, just it turns as a function of the card. He seems like he might be fun to try to play, but also kind of aggravating to try to play because I'm not sure you actually ever get any free cards off of this. You know, whether your opponent kills this or they kill all your other stuff. I'm just, I'm not sure it's going to work out for you. But again, in the format he is intended for, he looks like a very fun commander to build with. But this next card has Lotus in the title, so you know it's good, right? <laughs> it's Lotus Ring. It's three mana for an artifact. This is an equipment with Indestructible that equips for three. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and has Vigilance and Tap. Sacrifice this creature. Add three mana of any one color. Let's kind of go a little bit. I'm pretty sure this card is just straight up bad, you know? Like, the meme today has been like... You too can have your own Black Lotus for six mana and sacrifice a creature. <laughs> like, don't tell me about power creep and standard. We have definitely gone backwards in terms of power creep if this is meant to emulate a Black Lotus. But there's definitely a ton of like little tricks that you can do with it. First of all, it's not the worst card with Lotus ever printed on it. Let me just say that, you know, there's could have always been Lotus Guardian. That card's like really bad. But first of all, the big trick with this is Pure Steel Paladin because so long as you have like creatures that don't have summoning sickness on the table, then suddenly you just get a babillion mana. You know, if you have a way to get creatures when you sacrifice other creatures and create some sort of infinite loop, now all you need is a way to give all your dudes haste, some sort of global effect. And now you're effectively getting infinite mana. So it is possible to conceptualize infinite loops with this, but I think that the best lines with it are just going to be ways to get quick bursty mana out of it. And Pure Steel Paladin can help you with that too. But in standard, there's stuff like Danatha, which can just like get it out of your yard and throw it onto the Danatha. I guess that's something. There's stuff like Rook. Rook kind of makes sense. This card, I think, is from Aftermath. That's why you've probably never seen it before. But yeah, you can basically just pass your Lotus Ring onto your Rook once you sacrifice something else that has a Lotus Ring. So I guess that's something you could do. There's also like Kimba. Kimba's probably the best thing to do with it because whenever you get one of these cats, you can just like attach your Lotus Ring to it. That seems kind of dope, especially considering Kemba's only two mana to get out. But all of these, all these cards are kind of bad. Honestly, all the cards I pointed out, you can do stuff with this in standard are a little bit bad to be honest but at the same time i mean it's like plus three plus three in a keyword ability i mean let's not pretend like that's nothing either like if you do the dan at the trick she actually gets kind of enormous if you attach the 
the ring to her. So like just plus three plus three is kind of nice in and of itself, but I'm not sure this goes too many places in standard. I think they just want to sell cards because this has the word Lotus on it. But either way, it's a fun card to kind of think about. And honestly, some cards that you don't get to think about every day, right, are pretty good with this, which I do like. Again, none of those cards I mentioned were good, but at least I got to point them out. Uh, speaking of cards that are supposed to remind you of old cards that were really, really good, but these are kind of bad. Let's look at Memory Vessel. This is five mana. Three and two red for an artifact. You can tap it and exile the vessel to have each player exile the top seven cards of their library. Until next turn, players may play cards exiled this way, and they can't play cards exiled from their hand. Activate only as a sorcery. Now, my favorite thing about this, to be honest, is that it says until your next turn. So your opponent can't play any of the cards in their hand until your next turn. And you activated this on your turn. So you're not making them skip a turn or anything, but like they can't play cards in their hand. That's, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. But this is supposed to make you think of Memory Jar, which is technically one of the most broken cards of all time. Deck had to be emergency banned. Randy Bueller and his team found a way to just kill you on turn two with Memory Jar. <laughs> like Tolarian Academy. It was, it was a different time. It was back in the day when things were... Extremely broken. Again, tell me about power creep. <laughs> tell me about power creep. <laughs> you know, memory jar would have been a little bit more powerful than this, I think. But I know that power creep is mostly creatures. Don't give me the lecture in the comment section. Uh, spare me. But either way, you know, as far as like a thing trying to replicate memory jar, this is an extremely poor. This isn't even memory jar at home. It's like memory jar in the basement in a box forgotten somewhere. But it's still kind of neat to think about. I know it's not good, but like a bad memory jar. That has to be really bad to be bad, right? Like when you start at Memory Jar, you have to go many rungs down the ladder before the card starts becoming bad. And I honestly, I think they pulled it off here. <laughs> Five mana is like so much. And you want to actually like wait a turn to tap it so you have mana to cast the cards that you get off of it before your opponent can and blah, blah, blah. I just, you know, every, every few sets, every, like every few years, really, they decide like, here's a card that's like Time Twister. Here's, here's a card that's like Fork. Here's a card... It's like memory jar. And like this set, we got all three of those. <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to evoke. Again, they're probably just trying to sell packs and stuff. <laughs> Here's a card that's like Lotus. No, it's not. I don't know. This is probably about as safe as they can make a memory jar and it'd still be safe. And next, let's have a look at Pest Control. I really like this card, but that's probably just the Orzov talking. It's a black and a white for a sorcery. Destroy all non-land permanents with mana value one or less. You can also cycle this for two mana, which I really, really like. You know, I really like, like, Hidetsugu consumes all. I think it's actually busted against, like, the Boros decks and stuff right now. Um, played some games with it on stream. We did really well. <laughs> I think Hidetsugu's great. I've also been having some success with the Filigree Silex lately, but I just... Enough about me. <laughs> Talk about this card. Again, Boros is a real deck in standard right now, but it's not the only deck that plays a good number of, like, not only one drops, but tokens and stuff, too. And this card can take out all of those, and it's actually kind of very important. But in case you're playing against control or something, it's two-mana draw card, and that's not dead, and that's great. That said, though, even against control, I like that this is a card where you really got to pick your spots because, like, yeah, you can draw a more relevant card against control right now, or you can wait until they have two Wandering Emperor tokens and a Mirax right? <laughs> you can wait until they restless anchorage to block one of your guys. And then second main phase hit them with the stick, you know? So I, I don't, this is actually a sweet little card that can do stuff against even control. There's a lot of decks right now that play at the very least tokens and creature lands that you might want to draw them into activating during your turn. So there's actually a lot of really cool stuff about this and you might not want to cycle it against just about anything. If you can actually get them to play into it. Meanwhile, if you think it's going to be too much work or require too much patience to set something up to where this card's actually good, that's fine. Kid, just cycle it. You just get a, diff a different magic card. If you hate this one so much. So I'm not sure how many, of these are actually going to go in the main deck of anything, but it is a card I like a lot. All right, we've reached a kind of line here where we're going to start looking at really good magic cards, and most of them are artifacts. So let's take a look at Legion Extruder up next. Two mana, one and a red for an artifact. When it ETBs, it deals two damage to any target. You can also pay two and tap it and sack another artifact to create a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token. So, you know, the weird thing is, when I first saw this, the thing that I wanted to compare it to was Bone Crusher Giant. And I had this whole thing. I was going to come on screen and be like, hey, you know what? I know it's weird, but hear me out here. Bone Crusher Giant. And then I go on Reddit and it turns out like five other people had that exact same opinion. So I guess I'm glad I'm not alone on this one. It does kind of seem like Bone Crusher at home, but this 
is an artifact, whereas Bone Crusher wasn't. This can make multiple 3 3s, whereas Bone Crusher sure was a 4 3 that did damage to them when they tried to target it, blah, blah, blah. That was all fun and games, but like creating multiple 3 3s over the course of multiple turns might actually be even better than one solid 4 3. I do kind of wish it could sack itself, but it's got plenty of other things to sacrifice. Note that it can sacrifice tokens and stuff. So just being able to like upgrade those clues and blood tokens and such to three, three seems a pretty good deal to me. But speaking of sacrifice and artifacts, I figured it'd be good to show these two cards back to back. Let's take a look at esoteric duplicator, three mana, two and a blue for a clue artifact that's neat now because it's a clue you can pay two and sack it to draw a card and also whenever you sacrifice esoteric duplicator or another artifact you may pay two if you do at the beginning of your next end step create a token that's a copy of that artifact uh, first of all it's kind of an ever clue <laughs> just in and of itself it can sacrifice itself create a copy of itself sacrifice itself create a copy of itself it just keeps doing that which is really funny so you don't even have to have any other artifacts to kind of just make this an extra drawn card every turn and that's neat in and of itself but in commander there's like super obviously ashnod's altar right because that sacrifices artifact creatures at the very least and it gives you two mana with which to pay this ability and copy the thing you just sacrificed and get an enter the battlefield trigger off of it or something like that and then just sack it again and get the mana so it's just obviously good with ashnod's altar right but there's stuff it's good with in standard, right? There's stuff like Krinko and Crime Novelist if you want to do some sort of weird Is It Goblins deck, I guess. But Krinko allows you to sacrifice artifacts too. And Crime Novelist to give you a little mana when you sack artifacts. He wants you to sack them artifacts. Obviously, this works with the card that we just looked at. If you have two of them in play and you sack it, well, you know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, it works uh, regardless because you can sack something to the card we just looked at and then pay two and copy it with this card. So that's a fun little combo that's on curve, I guess, if you wanted to do that. There's also just like Oni Colt Anvil if you want to do like Grixis Anvil or something because you'll be sacrificing artifacts in that deck. You can even, if you have two Oni Colt Anvils, sack one of the Oni Colt Anvils and create a copy of the Oni Colt Anvil you just sacrificed. I don't know. This could get weird, but it also could get like very good this card could be absolutely ridiculous let's take a look at world walker texas rangers the world walker helm here this is three mana two and a blue for an artifact if you would create one or more artifact tokens instead create one of those tokens plus an additional map token you can also pay one in a blue and tap this to create a token that's a copy of target artifact token that you control okay so this is tricksy obviously you're supposed to copy maps and clues and bloods and treasures and blah blah right that's what you're supposed to do but we have this little card in standard called tamio her name is tamio and her middle ability allows you to just get rid of an artifact from your graveyard and create a token copy of it so what this card actually does is create a token copy of like any artifact in your entire graveyard once a turn for the rest of the game and that's where things might actually get like super busted if you got aunt tammy on the table this is also just potentially very very good with another card that we'll look at towards the end of the video but just as it stands this is a little bit better than it looks again especially in formats like commander where you've got that deep card pool to do combos and stuff with but again in standard despite as janky as it sounds i've always thought tammy was a pretty decent card she just needed something cool to do and now that we have this <laughs> she can do some really cool stuff drop a portal phyrexia in your graveyard and get one every single turn for the rest of the game sounds sweet to me but there's all kinds of other stuff in between portal to phyrexia and ginger brew that this can do for you up next is the newest card of the day it's collector's cage two mana one and a white for an artifact with hideaway five so when it comes into play you're gonna look at the top five cards of your library and then put one of them up under this thing for one and a tap, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. Then, if you have Coven, if you control three or more creatures with different power, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. A little Coven shout-out is nice every now and again, right? But either way, this is super easy to, to get the hideaway off of. Like, very? Am I crazy? It's just like very, very easy to get the hideaway from, man. You just got to play creatures in your deck, you know? And in the meantime... Even if you're not getting the card off of it, even if your opponent can wrath you before you get to three different powers, whatever, who knows? Just don't worry about the negatives. <laughs> you know, the negatives don't exist. Only the positives exist. <laughs> should be should be on a t-shirt. SBMTG, the negatives don't exist. Um, 
either way, I do like this like a good bit with a bunch of stuff we've got in standard right now. You can just like put this in your artifact decks because a lot of artifact decks play a fair number of artifact creatures. And then before you know it, you're getting something bonkers for free. Can I say Portal to Phyrexia in the same three times in the same video? Is that illegal? I probably can't, but <laughs> there's all kinds of other stuff. Thousand Moon Smithy or whatever in your Thousand Moon Smithy deck. But just in like a creature based aggro or mid range deck, this is a plus one plus one counter. Like basically every single turn until the turn, it gets you a, bra a free card. And I haven't even talked about this yet. Last thing I want to say, I promise <laughs> this can on the turn it comes down be three mana for a nine mana card. You can get ridiculous mana value out of this if you have three mana. Oh, you put you, you cast it and you have an open mana. You already have three creatures with different power. Cool. I guess you win the game. Like, <laughs> I'm serious, too. Like, this could actually work a little bit like that and do bonkers stuff the turn that it comes down. And it isn't even that mana intensive to make that kind of stuff happen. So, you know, you play one drop, one power guy, two drop, two power guy, three drop, three, four power guy. And then <laughs> starting on turn four, you get your free card pretty easily. So, I don't know, man. I actually think there's a lot to this and it could do some real work in standard. This is. Not actually that many hoops to jump through for a free card. And honestly, that last sentence has been the cause of ruin throughout all of Magic history. This doesn't look like a whole lot of hoops to jump through for a free card. You might as well stamp that onto multiple design teams' tombstones. Which was all a very kind of weird, it sounded very weird to me coming out, I'll be honest, way of saying that this card is probably good and expect things from it. It gives you a free card and like also does other stuff you want it to do too at a pretty low cost. So I think I'm done justifying this one. I will move on to a card I somehow like even more than this card. And it's Simulacrum Synthesizer. This thing is wacky, dude. Three mana, two and a blue for an artifact when it ETBs scry two. Whenever another artifact with mana value three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Okay, can I say Thousand Moon Smithy to you again? Now you get two of those constructs when your Moon Smithy comes into play. I like that a little bit. There's also stuff like Tinker's Tote, which now puts three creatures and an artifact into play. Detective Satchel, which at least meets these requirements and also allows you to put more tokens into play, right? So, I don't know. It seems like there's some at least cool stuff that you can do with this in Standard, but there's probably also some very broken stuff that you can do with this in Standard beyond the things I've already listed. It also doesn't do nothing when it comes into play, right? So, I can't... I guess it surveils too. The weakest thing about this card is the turn that you play it pretty much every time. But if you do untap with this in play, then suddenly you're going to be nearly unstoppable. And note that it doesn't only trigger once per turn, which is a little batty, you know, like I guess they think like, oh, well, it's artifacts three cost or greater. So you're not going to play a million of those in a turn. No, I'm not going to play a million, but I might play two or three. You know, <laughs> I might cheat a couple into play. It's not whenever you cast. It's whenever one comes into play and there's multiple ways to get like multiple artifacts and play it right now. I really want to play this with like brilliant restoration and nothing but artifacts. Right? <laughs> Just get a bunch of artifacts back at the same time and consequently a ton of Karnstruck tokens, you know? So there are ways to, if not break this, then at least do extremely fun stuff with it, which is really all I need. But I worry that there are in fact ways to actually break this card. And if you get two triggers off of it in the same turn, you probably just win the game if your opponent isn't holding Sunfall right then and there. So I don't know, but you know, they always are. <laughs> What am I worried about? I still think though that there's a lot to this card. And honestly, these like artifact centric decks that I've been trying to build forever since Thousand Moon Smithy came out and even before have always been like missing something. And we're starting to see some of the pieces that were missing the entire time. I think this may have been one of them. But that is Itsky Lewitsky for them preview cards today. We saw a lot of amazing stuff, dude. Like I know a lot of these cards just look like a little bit janky, but those are my favorite cards. Those are the ones I'm gonna freak out about, especially if it looks like there's actually Something we can even sort of do with them in standard, you know? So we got six months again until rotation. There better be a lot of fun stuff in this set to do. And honestly, especially with this, like the big scorecards, it looks like there is at least a lot of like janky stuff to kind of explore, which again, it's really all I need. It makes me happy as a Magic player. But let me know how you felt about everything from today. And also remember, there's going to be like two more days of ridiculous, like, big score, standard legal stuff to go over before spoiler season's all said and done. So stick with the channel. we got a few more of these left. And 
basically there's no more like common and uncommon slogs to have to go through 20 minutes of before we get to the good stuff. It's basically good stuff all day, every day for the next couple of days. So again, sub if you haven't done it yet. And of course you want to sub even though spoiler season's wrapping up in a couple of days because we've got deck techs after that. Top 50 cards maybe in the set, maybe 25, who knows? Top 10 sleepers. Going to do the video with Power Dragon where we talk about the most overrated cards in the set. There's a lot of content for this thing in the next week or two. So make sure you're subbed, hit the bell for the notifications, like the video, check out the Patreon. If you want to support the channel, we're trying to get these like hour long deck tech deep dives done. And that's honestly some extra support on Patreon would help a lot in that arena. Just so you know, but you don't have to do it. I'm just glad that you're here. If you made it all the way to this point in the video, that's really kind of amazing in my opinion. So just <laughs> thanks for being here all spoiler season and beyond guys. I appreciate it. But anyway, Basically, Olski Kowalski. So I'll catch you cats later. I'm Deb from the place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.